Hello, everyone. Welcome to a Clear Perspective. I'm Suring Li. Today, almost everyone believes in science, but people don't realize that there are governmental pandemic measures implemented around the whole world that are not scientifically proven, such as the six feet social distancing. What is the basis for the six feet rule? This regulation has been implemented since the early days of the COVID pandemic last year, and no one has asked why six feet, not more or less. A study by two MIT professors this April found that the six feet social distancing requirement is simply not reasonable. Also, it is unnecessary to close businesses and schools. So, where did the six feet distancing come from? On September 19th, former Commissioner of FDA Scott Gottlieb was interviewed by CBS Face the Nation. He said, "The six feet was arbitrary. Nobody knows where it came from. Most people assume that the six feet of distance, the recommendation for keeping six feet apart, comes out of some old studies related to flu, where droplets don't travel more than six feet." He added. The single reason why most schools remained shut was because the CDC was telling them they had to keep kids six feet apart. If the CDC had said you have to keep kids three feet apart, then a lot of schools would have been able to open. And in fact, when the Biden administration wanted to open schools in the spring, this past spring, they got the CDC to change that guidance from six feet to three feet. He explained the decision-making process back in 2020. The initial recommendation that the CDC brought to the White House talked about this was 10 feet, and the White House official said, "We cannot recommend 10 feet. Nobody can measure 10 feet. Society will shut down." So the compromise was around six feet. So the six-foot regulation was made through bargaining. Even the initial recommendation of 10 feet wasn't based on scientific evidence. Because of Biden's White House request, this March CDC has updated its guidance for schools that at least three feet apart in classrooms. So we see the physical distance rule went from 10 feet to six feet and is now reduced to three feet. Next, let's take a look at Arizona. The Arizona Senate will release its audit report this Friday, but the Maricopa County's Board of Supervisors have been opposing the audit. Maricopa County has always claimed that they have audited their votes twice last year and found no problems. However, several recordings of Maricopa County Supervisor Member Steve Chukri in January and March shine some light on this issue. But the next day, September twenty-second, Steve Chukri announced his resignation. In a statement, Chukri said the political landscape has changed for the worst, and that he intends to step down in November. On Tuesday, September twenty-first, the Gateway Pundit released the recordings of Chukri, and what Chukri said basically destroyed the credibility of the two self-claimed audits by Maricopa County last year. The March twenty-second recording is a conversation between Chukri and the two county residents during a meeting between Chukri and the private organization We the People AZ Alliance. It is a citizen-led organization that tries to push elected officials to act on election concerns with a full forensic audit. One of the key points that Chukri made was that the two self-claimed audits conducted by Maricopa County last year were nonsense. One audit was done by a company that certified the equipment, and the other was a small-scale sample audit. Chukri said that. The very small-scale audit done by Maricopa County last year was intended to declare that the election was free and fair, but actually it was quite nonsense. The audit only looked at about two percent of the votes. That is a total of about forty-seven thousand out of two point one million votes. 
and the Maricopa County kept using this audit as an excuse in opposing the Senate from conducting a full forensic audit. At the meeting, they also talked about the seriousness of the problems that occurred in November 2020. Chukri believed some votes came from dead people, which is a multi-level problem. He also brought up ballot harvesting. That is, Chukri knew exactly what types of security problems were encountered last November and knew that only a full forensic audit could find out the truth. So how could the rest of the Board of Supervisors not know? According to Gateway Pandit, Chukri was the only member of the Board of Supervisors willing to meet with residents at the time. He criticized his colleagues for not standing up for voting rights and not cooperating with the Senate. Chukri said that his colleague Clinton Hickman just didn't have the guts to do a real audit. Hickman is also a Republican on the Board of Supervisors. Chukri also said his colleagues were afraid of the Senate review because their election campaigns were closed. Quote, Gates got scared because he barely won, and Jack got scared because he only won by 200 votes. And if there was an audit and a recount, what would happen in those two races? And that is way too self-serving. Chukri said. The Gates mentioned by Chukri is Supervisor Bill Gates. Jack is the chairman of the Board of Supervisors, Jack Sellers. Chukri also said his colleagues may oppose Senate scrutiny in order to stay in office, and that he himself will do his duty to the people. However, after the leaked recordings released, Chukri made a statement saying that, quote, the comments I made were during a very turbulent time. My colleagues have every right to be both angry and disappointed with me. I should not have made such statements and offer my colleagues heartfelt apologies. We can see that Chukri is under huge pressure that he decided to resign. We will wait and see what happens when the audit report is released on the 24th. Finally, we have another update on Millie's secret CCP phone calls. According to the Gateway Pundit, Leon Panetta admitted that he was involved in General Millie's secret phone calls to China. Leon Panetta, former Secretary of Defense and the Director of the CIA under the Obama-Biden administration, has repeatedly and publicly criticized the former President Trump. He recently said that the first phone call was approved by the Defense Secretary Mark Asper, and that the second secret phone call to the CCP was made because President Trump was appointing political people to key positions at the Defense Department. He also said, we were concerned about what the President might do. Panetta was a former government official and an ordinary citizen but he was able to get involved in such a confidential conversation between a top U.S. military official and a senior CCP official without the President Trump's acknowledgement. How many other Obama-era government officials were secretly involved in various high-level decision-making process during the Trump administration? That's all for today. Please subscribe, like, and share our channel. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time.